All right, kids, we're back. And here is what the graphs look like for position versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. I'm not sure if your graphs look anything like that. I don't really care if they do, because you are making a prediction based off of your own knowledge, which probably isn't much at this point, which is completely fine. This is all new to us. But here's what the graphs look like, and I want to discuss why the graphs look the way they do, but I just want to quickly go back to this, um, this horizontal oscillation virtual space here, and I click on this hovercraft, and as you can see, the hovercraft hits the spring in equilibrium, goes to the left, and then goes back to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. And in doing so, what it does, it actually creates this position versus time graph down below. And the position versus time graph has numbers on it, which at this point don't even you don't even need to look at them. We won't even be dealing with numbers until later. So all we care about is what the shape looks like. And so here we go with the position versus time graph. And as you can see at the beginning of the time, it's at the zero position. And it moves to the left. And when it moves to the left, it goes negative. And so the position goes from zero down to this biggest negative point. And then the hovercraft goes back to the right and gets to this big right position. And so it goes back to the right hits equilibrium, which means it's right in the middle, and then it continues to go right until it gets to that maximum right position or maximum positive position, and then it goes back from the very biggest right or positive position back to equilibrium, which is right here. And as you can see, over this time period, the hovercraft did one cycle. So that's the time of one cycle. And then it repeats that pattern for another cycle and then for another cycle. And this graph shows beyond that third cycle. So that's what the position versus time graph looks like. And so when you go back to the document that I created, you should see that my position versus time graph looks the same. So it goes from a zero position and it goes to the left and gets to the most left position or the biggest negative position and then it goes from the biggest negative position and it moves towards the right and moves towards equilibrium and gets to equilibrium and then it passes through equilibrium and this is halfway through the cycle it passes through equilibrium and then goes to the very rightmost position which is the biggest positive position and then comes back and goes to the left and goes back to equilibrium and it goes through equilibrium moving left and this is where it has made one full cycle and so that's the first cycle time and then it repeats that process again just like I explained on the previous screen but it did deserve being explained twice alright so now we'll look at the velocity so the velocity when the hovercraft hits the spring when the spring is at this zero position, it is going its fastest to the left. So it's the biggest negative velocity. And then it, it has, it continues to go to the left, but it slows down, it slows down, and it stops when it gets to that leftmost point or its biggest negative position. And then it turns around and starts going a positive velocity and it goes faster and faster and faster and faster until the hovercraft gets to the equilibrium position at the point when it's going its fastest positive velocity to the right. And then it continues to go through equilibrium, continuing to go right, to continuing to go positive. But as it's going positive, it's slowing down, and it's slowing down until it gets to its biggest right or biggest positive position, which you see up here. And when it gets to that biggest positive position, it um, stops for an instant, and it turns around. And so when it turns around, it goes negative 
it moves a negative velocity and so that negative velocity is faster and faster as it moves away from the right or the big positive position and it gets to its fastest point right here when it's going through equilibrium moving to the left moving negatively and so as you can see we've done one full cycle of velocity and then the pattern continues to do the same thing for each cycle all right so that's velocity versus time so let's talk about acceleration versus time so when the hovercraft hits the spring at equilibrium it has zero acceleration and as the hovercraft moves to the left the spring wants to push it more to the right which is positive and as the spring gets compressed more and more as the hovercraft moves more and more left the spring wants to push back to the right more and more and once the hovercraft gets all the way to the left or the biggest negative position that's when it has its biggest positive acceleration that's when the spring is compressed the most trying to push it back right and so now the spring wants to continue to push it right but it's going to push it less and less as the spring gets closer to equilibrium and when it gets to equilibrium that's when there is zero acceleration because the the spring is neither compressed nor stretched and so it doesn't want to force it either way and so now the hovercraft continues to um, move to the right after equilibrium and as it moves to the right the spring stretches more and more wanting to pull the hovercraft back to the left and as it's trying to pull it back to the left it has this more and more and more bigger and bigger negative acceleration and when it gets down here to that biggest negative acceleration that's when the hovercraft is at the rightmost position or the biggest positive position and that's when the hovercraft is being pulled the most by the spring to the left being pulled most by the spring in the negative direction and so that is when it's making the hovercraft turn around and going from moving right and now it's going to move back to the left and as it moves back to the left the spring is stretched less and less pulling it less and less to the left until it gets back to its equilibrium position when it's no longer pulling or pushing it because it's no longer compressed or stretched and that's the point um, when there's zero acceleration and once again that repeats for a second cycle and then it repeats for a third cycle all right so i hope this explanation was helpful as to what your answer should be i hope your prediction was whatever I don't care if it was right or wrong. I just care that it was something. And I'd be interested to find out um, how you guys did whenever we have a chance to chat about things. All right, if you have any questions about this or um, anything else related to horizontal oscillation, please don't hesitate to reach out with questions. Um, from here, you will work on Waves Unit 1 Worksheet 1, which you will be re required to draw these same graphs for um, a block going back and forth on this particular worksheet. So good luck with that, and uh, good luck with everything else.